Hello, fans. Hello. Welcome to uh, this week's Final Order Cast Show. I'm Keith with Imark Comics. And I'm Steve with Big Easy Comics. We are here with uh, today's fun, fun, fun to show you what's off with this week. A little bit uh, shorter show than last week since we don't have to do an entire month of uh, one company. Uh, yeah. But uh, still uh, some good stuff to highlight here. And uh, one comic that has entirely too many covers. But yes, way too many covers. I think, does it, does it have more than 300 dead? No, I think it's actually at the same number. I think it's almost it's it's almost exactly at the same number. I think I think if yeah. I counted it right. I didn't but there's look what letter it went to this time. We'll give it credit. There's more variety because there's less just three copies of every cover. So uh, we'll that's see. true. We'll it's get still there. Like Twenty too many. But if you want to kick us off with chatting about this, yeah, yeah. So um, there's a so if you've not been following Buffy the Vampire Slayer, so we're you know. Um, Boom has kind of kicked off this whole new Buffy verse, and this is going to be this is a whole this is a, a series that is going to uh, reimagine the the introduction of Buffy to Angel. Mm-hmm. So, and the, and and uh, that's cover A there, and that's Jenny Prison. But um, so you've got um, uh, Mistress and Drusilla and and Spike trying to open the Hellmouth, and that's what this whole series is about: is Buffy partner uh, teaming up with Angel to stop that. Yeah, and they're they're advertising again. This is your first little crossover event. Your first, you know, showing that everything kind of uh, exists on you know together, and that they they match up. And uh, not going very deep on this. Like you don't have to do like six months of both books if you're a fan of one or the other. So I I thought that the the short little uh, time span on this was actually pretty strong. But uh, we've also got a, a B cover here uh, done by uh, Kyle Lambert, which just really good looking there. And a C cover, which is the next in your connecting cover set. Uh, It's uh, Kelly Matthews. Yeah. Um, We don't have pictures for there's an unlock Kyle Lambert foil. I'm assuming that it might be that same art that we just saw on the B cover. But uh, um, you have to order so many issues to be able to unlock that for your store. Uh, But I don't think that the number was too high. So I think we're probably both going going to get that. I, I, we have a lot of Buffy subscribers at the yeah. store. And yeah, I, so. I'd, I'd hate to not, not be able to get that one for them. Now we'll have that in a blank, blank cover too and all that. So uh, next up we have Batman's Grave, which I'm going to say thank you to DC for sending us out some real preliminary on this for us to get an idea what the story is. I mean, I believe that even like halfway through the preliminary that we got, um, it's not even inked anymore. You know, so it... Yeah. Gave us a good look at the book, um, and I taunted Richie with it pretty hard about holding it back from him for a couple days. Uh, but uh, we uh, we did get a chance to read this, and uh, interesting book. I I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan of Grant Morrison. Well, yeah, but this is uh, Warren Ellis. Oh, so. my, wrong one, wrong one, wrong yeah, one. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. It can be kind of interchangeable sometimes. Yeah, I do confuse uh, those yeah, two. Yeah, Warren Ellis and Brian Hitch, and yeah, I read I read the. Uh, the the preview they gave us of the they gave us the whole first issue to read and you're absolutely right I mean some of it was just was just pencil in the middle of the book um, but the first issue so I think is going to set the story up nicely so I, I'm looking forward to to reading the second one I'll admit Hitch is not one of my top top artists I have a lot of respect for what he does in the craft but it's just mm-hmm. not a style that's great for me but I thought it fit really well for what we saw oh I agree hundred percent yeah. So we've got a, uh, this is a hitch cover here on the A, so again, the same as the interiors. And then this just coming right at you, a uh, G. Young Lee variant mm-hmm. on this. So, uh, you know, they, they've been digging deep into the talent well for uh, new new creators here, and this one looks great. So also this will have a blank cover too. Right, yeah. Ah, yeah, so this is uh, the Joker, you're the villain uh, one shot, right? And uh, what's really cool about this is one of you see this uh, poster behind me. Uh-huh. Um, that's, a, uh, that's actually a Mondo uh, glow in the dark super limited edition poster for the John Carpenter's The Thing. And why does that matter? Because John Carpenter is <laughs> co-writing uh, this this uh, Joker Year of the Villain book with Anthony Birch. So um, it's going to be pretty exciting. Anthony Birch is responsible for Borderlands. It'd be, 
you know, you're not like me and you play video games. I don't. So <laughs> I, I, I wasn't sure who that was. I mean, I've heard of Borderlands, but, and, and Cody plays that all the time, I'm sure, but I, I don't, you know, I don't play video games anymore. Um, but, you know, uh, the art and the cover art uh, is by Philip Tan and uh, Mark Deering. And then we also have a blank cover for this one as well. Yeah. So uh, this, I think, is really being underbilled because I'll say this, I, uh, reading the solicit and seeing John Carpenter on this, seeing the, you know, the guy from Borderlands, that's, those are names, but it doesn't seem like it's been promoted very heavily like this. So I think it's kind of slipping under the radar. I was expecting very much when I saw this book of, you know, Luther coming and offering the Joker something, and it's just not, not going to go the way Luther wants it to go because the Joker's such a wild card. Right. Yeah, I mean, um, I just probably they just feel like they don't need to do any promoting to sell the book. It's it's a, it's the Joker, and it's a so it's a one shot for Year of the Villain, so it's going to sell. They don't have to like do a bunch of extra work to sell sure. copies. I think. True for that. Now, Ruby, uh, Americanized uh, American. What is this called? Americanized manga is what this is. It's a so some of the guys do the Rooster Teeth who I followed for years with Red versus Blue. That was one of my favorite little things when they were using Machinima to do uh, the uh, uh, Halo series in this. But uh, this is their product out there. It's it's exploding. It, it has a huge fan base for this, uh, and uh, it's now coming to comics. Uh, yeah, this- I know a little about this. This, is, uh, this would be one that, uh, you know, my son Cody would be able to tell, tell me a lot about. Hundred percent. It's a, it, it's it feels like a generational thing. That it's definitely something that they that the younger generation knows about this much more than we do. Uh, I'm a little sad here that uh, I, I like this this cover art here, uh, uh, Sarah Stone, um, but the B cover that we don't have an image for because Jim Lee's always late uh, right. is is <laughs> is going to be a Jim Lee cover. So that still will be popular. And we've seen ahead who, where some of the other variants are, and those are going to be tremendous for issues two and beyond too. So, uh, right, I, I agree. I don't yeah. know who you know. This doesn't line up exactly with somebody to you know, like we can say, oh, Green Lantern fans go on to a Green Lantern book kind of thing. But uh, I'm expecting people to show up out of the blue for this. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I'm, look, I'm looking forward to seeing some new faces. Ah, look, what's next? Uh, ta- the first Tales from the Dark Multiverse title uh batman nightfall uh did you read this one 100 percent, i did yeah i read this one this morning uh, because i hadn't gotten a chance to earlier in the week and it was amazing i loved it um just a fantastic story and if if uh if you're not familiar with uh the dark multiverse this all ties back into the batman who laughs and all the things that, are, that go on in, in these other realities and um so this this is uh uh, let's see. What can I say about? It? What am I allowed to say about it? I mean, it, it, it's it's a different take on on the Nightfall storyline, um, the kind of the aftermath and what happens, um, you know. And obviously, you can see Azrael there on the cover, so I mean, it gives you some kind of idea of uh, where where the story is going. Yeah. After so. after Nightfall, we get into the Night's End where Bruce comes back, you know, and everybody's all going to think that you know that guy recovered from a broken back pretty fast. But um, he had to reclaim his mantle, you know, that you saw things with with Azrael Batman going a darker way. This flat out is your what if Batman couldn't retake it and and Azrael continues on. And the pieces and the elements that they set up inside the story that we got to read on this are are fun. That's a fun trip. Yeah, I I enjoyed that one uh, immensely. Yeah. Yeah. Just a uh, a cover on this one, uh, uh, cover art by Lee Weeks, uh, stands out really well. And I thought the interiors fit the type of story very well on this for what we did see. Again, unfinished product, but uh, it, it looked good, and I'm, I'm going to highly recommend it. Uh, Doctor Doom number one here. Uh, now, Stephen informed me this morning that I didn't even know we could have read this one too, and I'm going to have to go and read it here probably later this afternoon. So what did yeah. you think? I... Well, I'm a little biased because I, I, I Doom is one of my favorite villains. So um, it, it's it's an interesting story, you know. And uh, the, so uh, there's um, there you know they're, they've basically solved the um, climate problem and and some other things, you know, with this um, new uh, 
artificial black hole, right? And that's, you know, that's, that's in the description you can go read online. Um, but, you know, he's basically saying it's a, it's going to be a, a giant disaster. And, um, you know, they're made, they're, they're making terrible, a terrible decision by, by building it, putting it there. Um, and what happens in, in the first issue is it gets destroyed and he gets blamed. So, and then, you know, um, that's the, I mean, that's essentially where, where we're at kind of at the end of that, that issue. And, uh, it's, yeah, it's going to be a really good story. Cause I, I mean, clearly I think, uh, it's a frame job, right? So we'll see where, where it's going. I love, I really, really enjoyed that first issue. I thought the art was fantastic. Um, and of course, doom being himself, uh, you know, and obviously feeling intellectually superior to everyone he talks to in the book. Uh, that was great stuff. La Roca for your interior artist. There is one of my favorite from a run of X-Men with extreme X-Men that he did. Uh, and so definitely I, I, I can look forward to the interior art on this. Uh, you do have a B cover here, a Mary Jane cover. We're into that uh, a month here uh, as we brought up before. That's a, a take on material girl. Yeah. That that's that's definitely that's definitely a Madonna esque yeah. <laughs> right there with all the Doom bots being the uh, guys in uh, in suits instead. That's that's humorous. That's really good on this. This is uh, Cliff Chang on mm -hmm. the uh, um, uh, Mary Jane variant. Yeah, I dug that one. Oh, hey, another Star Wars one shot. Um, I don't know how Star Wars titles do at uh, your shop, but we have a very dedicated following to all the Star Wars books that come out. Um, this one's, uh, I think, especially cool because it's not just a random, you know, kind of one-off. It's it's a story that takes place um, prior to the uh, episode what, nine. What's that? Episode uh, nine, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, so I'm looking forward to this, you know, because anything that kind of fills in some of those blanks and, and is considered canon. Um, it's it's all good stuff so um we always you know these always do well we have a i have a whole bunch of customers that are just signed up for every star wars book that comes out and this is a great kind of getting ready for um you know episode nine here it, what is that coming out of christmas -ish? yeah 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 i think people uh, are really excited to that. see some details uh of that i i i will agree with you anything that's an extended universe that um, sit there and fits in place with the same characters um, is is fantastic. Some of the best stuff came out of uh, storytelling came out in those types of ways. Uh, and this this does definitely feels like the little appetizer, you know, uh, trying to trying to tide you over, just waiting a couple more months for that uh, that movie to hit. Because uh, I think most Star Wars fans are are extremely excited to see where the uh, where it's going to end. Uh, that'll do it for number ones, and we can jump into some of the highlights here. Yeah. Uh, so Superman, uh, year one, uh, number three. This is the final part of this. Uh, this has done extremely well for us, and we've enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's great. Just a great title. I, I you know, and I love the, everything they've done with the, all the books they put on the black label. Mm -hmm. I think that there, it, there's even going to be a little bit more you know, people paying attention to this kind of thing when, when they're relating Frank Miller uh, and what he's kind of playing with in his own little version here. And now that there's that announcement of the uh, uh, December book coming up, that's yeah. one more part of the... Uh, uh, Night the Golden Child. Yeah, yeah. That, that's... that's I love that it's a one-shot. That'll be a nice little little story one-off there. And, and this whole thing fits and feels like that same universe that he's created to, uh, to kind of give you a harder edge... Uh, version, but is this still stayed very, very true to uh, Clark Kent, and not just didn't turn him into you know this this monster you know like that you would think that the Dark Knight universe would have. So, yeah. A cover here by Romita and B cover by uh, Frank Miller. I will definitely be making more fun of this when Richie's uh, hyping it with me because you know you you got to push the buttons. That's that's the game. Right. I know. Oh yeah! Hey, another another great highlight, right? And, you know, Amazing Fantasy Fifteen is a really expensive book, and you know most people can't afford to own one. And uh, Marvel has graciously, uh, you know, put it into their facsimile editions 
uh, this month, you know, so releasing in three, you know, what, October 9th, I think is the day we're looking at right now. Yeah, October 9th with all this stuff this week. You can pick up, uh, you know, a, co a copy of Amazing Fantasy 15 in a nice, nice facsimile format. Yeah, what the biggest Marvel book there is, right? I mean, there's you, it's the Cadillac there and all this, and a vast majority of us are not going to own it in our lifetime. So this is your chance to to, to kind of see where it all started. Yeah, absolutely. Powers of X is the other highlight book. Now this this is the the final chapter. This wraps up the the whole journey. Uh, I don't expect bringing this up here is going to bring a lot of new readers to the idea of this. This is just again kind of a tip of the cap that uh, for everything that's gone so well with the launch of this product. Um, we, I can run through the covers so quick because everybody knows where this is. This is going to, from here, you spider out to all the X books, um, check in with each one of us. We're going to have lists of, uh, uh, the X books to subscribe to from Marauders and New Mutants and X-Men and all the different ones that are out there. Uh, tell you who the creative teams are, tell you who the artists are and, you know, start, it's time to start picking and choosing and, and following things. I think there's going to be a huge upsurge in the beginning because of how strong this has been. Uh, and I think it's deserved. I think I, I, I'm an X fan, so it's, you know, it's easy for me to toot my horn, but it's delivered. So, uh, no, it's, it's been fantastic. And, and I'm not, you know, unfortunately I'm not all the way caught up right now because I've been out of town a bunch, but, um, I, I do think that, you know, there's plenty of people who can watch this video and, and, and see, Hey man, I need to go get on this book. And they've, they've been nice and reprinted a bunch of the, the previous issues. So, you know, hopefully, uh, we both have everything in stock. I mean, I'm working hard to make sure right. we have in stock. <laughs> because I think this one's going to sell for a while, right? Yes. Um, we're going to be keeping this on the shelf for quite some time. Mm -hmm. So A cover was uh, by R.B. Silva, the interior artist. Um, next cover here is the new characters by Dustin Weaver. Uh, this is, I think this will be the most popular Decades variant. You know, it's... Oh, yeah. For sure. It's, it's the guy, and it's done really well here and all this. This is Kafu doing uh, the Wolverine Decades variant. Um, this is the other half of the uh, Javier on uh, connecting cover from the previous week. Again, focusing on uh, villains of the of the uh, <laughs> X-Men here. Uh, the, the connectings have been tremendously successful. Uh, JTC on uh, his uh, uh, action figure variant. And uh, Scotty Young on a fun little one, which yeah, that, that's a great one. I really. have to, I have to get this myself because of how uh, deep I am into uh, cards and like X, you know, X-Men cards are my heart and soul. You're not kidding, man. I, you're like I collected them when I was a teenager, uh, you know, Marvel two series one through four probably. But um, you know, if, if you haven't seen Keith's uh, collection of Marvel cards, uh, I mean, it's uh there's nothing like it <laughs> anywhere. I don't even, can't even describe it. There was a set of uh, last year of the um, Fleer Ultra X-Men came back, and I'm working on the last 66 that I need for my Master Master set. And uh, um, I'm going to be posting pictures of it all when I when I get it all put together. I also uh, I got something real special. I have a different set, and uh, I'm getting it framed right now just took it in finally to, to get it all framed it's gonna it's gonna turn out gorgeous of a original piece by uh simone bianchi so it's that's that's my collection that's my my weak point so this one's just gonna work for that yeah oh hey let's uh let's talk about variants then i yeah. guess yep yep so it's, uh well so this is batman and the outsiders number six but this is the uh, cover a the tyler kirkham uh cover uh, and uh, what we really wanted to highlight for this one was uh, the Steven Sego Segovia cover B because that one is just fantastic. I am going to cheat so hard when this comes out. I'm putting our Bloodshot uh, Reborn, uh, number one, that we did a custom with Segovia on oh so many years ago because it looks so similar to these kind of head wounds and blood and all this next yeah. to it and i'm just going to re-promote it again you know we've been keeping it about five bucks and i've been waiting like mad for the movie that's the trailer's about to hit with the new number one and things like that but um I, i've i've liked his art for years yeah yeah catwoman here number 16 um i feel always bad highlighting catwoman books because you seem to gloss over the a cover which is john jones is 
is a fantastic artist. This is you get writing and and doing the interiors on this, but you quickly move to these B covers that have been outstanding for the series. And now this is Victor Kolobchev, and uh, we no longer get art germs, but uh, so it's it's going to draw a different crowd. But I I still think that there's high quality this cover. I like this one too a lot. Yeah, it's different. It's different. Um, oh, Detective Comics 1013. Um, so cover A, uh, same. same uh, so Doug uh, Mankey on this one. And then uh, your B cover is uh, Tyler Kirkham again. So, and, and so, uh, you know, this kind of, um, you know, zombie deceased kind of theme is, is kind of, you'll see a few more times. <laughs> yep. Uh, Flash has a great a cover to it also is Raphael Sandoval's uh a on this this is flash number 80 uh the howard porter b uh for it's not hard to find the homage there is it about the the flash of two worlds kind of you know both running down the opposite sides kind of thing it's not quite that but i mean you definitely tell where he gets a little bit of his sourcing from yeah ah yeah harley and uh poison ivy number two Yep. Cover A's, uh, you know, pretty nice, right? By uh, Mikkel Janin. But it's uh, it's the B and C covers by Warren Lau that are going to catch people's eyes. So last month, number one, we had Art Germ, right? Yes. And, uh, yeah. So number two, we've got Warren Lau doing the same thing, right? You've got a Harley cover and you've got an Ivy cover as well. Yeah, not quite lining up 100%, but so tied together with, with in theme. It's just those are done really well and are going to glow on the stands considering how bright the colors he's using in the backgrounds are. Yeah. Uh, Hawkman 17. We get uh, Pat Laffey here on the uh, A cover. Uh, and this B cover, just dark by James Heron, just, just mean and menacing. I think we, it, this is the month where most of the, like you said, the, a lot of this is kind of a zombified, it's a little bit of an homage to deceased, you know, through a lot of the, the art stylings. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, dark feelings and, you know, uh, more of a haunted thing. I mean, these are all October covers, right? So we're leading up to Halloween, right? Correct. Yeah. So, and this was one of my favorites this week. Oh, where are we at? Oh, Justice League Odyssey 14. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got a Will Conrad A cover. And uh, for the second month in a row, we've got a uh, Perillo B cover. Guy's so. got great art on that one. I'll let you do this next one, too, because it'll lead into the one I'm going to have to spend all yeah. the time on. Oh, sure, sure. Oh, yeah, because you always let me do, Jenny. Uh, <laughs> number 80. Uh, so we've got a Yannick Paquette uh, cover A and, of course, uh, a, a Jenny Frizen B. I just – I love this one. Uh, you know, I – it's so you got all the Amazons, you got Wonder Woman there, and you know, uh, just crazed, bloodthirsty. Yeah, just yeah, I love that one. It looks great. A lot more than our normal covers. Yeah, like our normal covers, yeah. like a very stoic kind of pose. Not not a lot of multi character, uh, but I like this. You you get to see a lot of uh, action, a lot of emotion. Well, I mean, it's the same emotion in the faces, but you know, you get you definitely get the idea conveyed. Yeah. Uh, but let's hit the monster of the week because you know if you're gonna go big, you go super, you go McFarlane big, right? I mean that's 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 your level. Over the top. <laughs> so record breaking Spawn 301. Record breaking because previous to this, uh, Dave Sim with Cerebus ran for 300 issues strong, where it was a creator owned title that that hit 300. Uh, I think Sim still gets a little bit of a tip to the cap for the longevity, although like personal politics aside, um, because he did, he was on all the books all the way through. He did yeah. it all there. Uh, Spawn's a, definitely a strong enough character that deserves, you know, 301 issues. Uh, has had a fan base that while there's been a couple lulls, it, it comes back. Uh, but uh, he's very much on his first cover here, McFarland's cover. Uh, kind of paying tribute to that because you've got that ghosted number one behind him yeah and he's standing on this stack of of spawn comics so right. now to get to so our letters go up to lpq i think so that's i don't even know what letter the alphabet is like 18 something like that, like that yeah we'll run them here and all this uh greg capullo 
Not only has uh, this is the B cover, but the C is this with the Virgin treatment, so you'll have no logo. Mm -hmm. Your D cover, Jason Sean Alexander, will only have one image, won't have a Virgin. Clayton Crane, which this one, he originally released a different image, and I rushed to put it out there, and it was a little early, so they came back with the right image for it. This is the right one here for the E cover. F is Jerome Pena, still a favorite of mine. You know, Seven to Eternity, uh, Uncanny X-Force, big stuff for me there. Uh, G uh, is going to be Francisca Matina, but because they decided how the art works on this, they're doing a virgin only on this. So you won't have one with the normal trade dress. H is your Todd McFarlane parody, parodying himself back to uh, Amazing Spider-Man 301. Yeah, this one I expect to be popular. Yeah, there, this was the first one that of the variants I sold out of. Uh, when 300 came out uh, now we go back to a uh, black and white on uh, this uh, one here for the eye there is a version of this but it's the one in 25 variant so that's a little bit more limited we're kind of showcasing covers that are easier to obtain now we get into some other big artists that just came on for 301 here alex ross uh, these next three artists all will have a uh, regular cover and a virgin version of the same art that you're seeing Bill Sienkiewicz, which is really good looking, and, mm -hmm. and J. Scott Campbell, who I, you know, like, uh, I think even Campbell fans will agree that his Spawn art is at a different level than most of his uh, uh, female art uh, because he's, he's able to, to show this off just very well. So, again, all three of those have a regular and a virgin for them. Uh, and then the last, the last one was a blank that uh, we're just not showing an image of there. So that's options. That's a lot. <laughs> there's there's going to be there for a while. There are many. They, most of them are really great covers too, but I really wish, you know, we, we could have uh, saved some of those for, for future issues because it's just that's just too many for that's me. I'm, hope, I'm hoping 302 slows down. I, I haven't even looked ahead yeah. to see what it's yeah. like. I know he's excited, but, you know, pump the brakes a little bit, Todd. Um, okay, so uh, Absolute Carnage continues in uh, Amazing Spider-Man uh, number 31, right? When this is with this Ryan Otley cover A. Um, but really, I want to highlight cover B from Greg Smallwood, which is the, uh, the Mary Jane uh, cover, variant cover, because, uh, you know, we've got the Amazing Mary Jane coming pretty soon. Um and that's you know we're kind of that's what these covers are meant to kind of lead up to. Showing a lot of range here for Smallwood from from what he was doing. Didn't he uh, do the? Am I thinking right? It was the Marvel Comics seventies variant that was the the horror one. I think I'm pretty I sure that. Remember. I hope I'm not wrong, but um, he's showing a lot of range here on on this cover here. Uh, Miles Morales. Uh, this is issue number eleven with a A cover here by Mike Hawthorne. Uh, but again, back with the Mary Jane month, because uh, Mirka and Dolfo, uh, with this, uh, this will be popular. <laughs> this is a, yeah. got a soft, soft look to it. And uh, is, is this our last one of the week here? Wrap us up. All right, let me wrap it up then. So, Web of Black Widow number two, cover A by Jung Gyun Yoon, I hope, is I pronounced <laughs> correctly. Um, and then cover B is uh, another Mary Jane cover by Ben Oliver. So, Red, Redheads Unite. Yeah. There you go. I mean, it reminds me a little bit of like uh, maybe, um, I mean, it's not as as um, raw as the, like, Sienkiewicz's art from um, Electra Assassin. It kind of reminds me a little bit of, of one of those covers from way, way back in the day. It definitely has the period feel with when you take a look at like Mary Jane's outfit there, you know, like that's, that's not modern day feeling. That's very, you know, late seventies, early eighties. So I'm, I'm, I'm with you on the vibe. Yeah. And that's, that's the last one of the week folks. Thank goodness. Cause last week's show was so long. Uh, and uh, it's, our goal is to keep it under 15 minutes. So I don't know if we did that today or not. Cause Todd McFarlane, you know, insisted on having so many covers for Spawn, but a lot of great stuff, uh, you know, with orders due Monday night. And uh, so, you know, get those in, comment in the video. Uh, we also continue to post both of us, uh, our, uh, our, mon you know, our, our 
galleries of photos that you can uh, also, you know, put your uh, polls and, and, and subscriptions you want to add to on those as well. So, yep, this is us offering it out to you so you can get in early, you know, beat some of the hype train because now that all this stuff is visual and out there and people are analyzing it, this is when, you know, certain things start picking up. Um, but, uh, you know, pick them up now, you know, turn around, put your requests in and we're ready to service. Yeah. Have a great week, guys. Thanks, guys.